hey, can we take Postgres and make it as fast as Redshift or as Snowflake? Uh, can we do that? So my co-founder and I met at Heroku. Uh, JD was there before I started and he was there uh, after I left. I went to a startup called Citus Data, which was a sharded Postgres uh, that could scale out horizontally. Um, that company was acquired by Microsoft Azure. So I spent the last couple of years as a PM uh, supporting Postgres primarily, but all open source databases uh, at Microsoft. Participated in Y Combinator last year. And one of the things that we noticed were that our batchmates were using data warehouses. So think uh, BigQuery, Redshift, uh, Snowflake, others. Um, coming from Microsoft, uh, I traditionally thought that companies wouldn't adopt a data warehouse until they were multiple terabytes, uh, perhaps even tens of terabytes in size. When you think about what a data warehouse is for, uh, it's for aggregating many disparate sources of data to a single common place. And it's also about um, processing large amounts of data as an organization grows. Now, these companies in YC did not have huge amounts of data, but they did see a lot of value in consolidating from many of the different silos to that kind of single place to do proper reporting. An open source data warehouse that's more accessible to developers, startups, and, uh, and everyone who's really looking to get started with uh, proper, flexible analytics at their company. Having been in YC, uh, Hacker News community is one that's really near and dear to our hearts. Um, you know, more than half of the GitHub stars that we have on our repo are just as a result of posting uh, some of our release to, uh, to Hacker News. Uh, back in December, we shared how we added uh, query parallelization and vectorization of where clauses to Postgres on columnar storage. Uh, in doing so, we we're actually able to benchmark Hydra as the fastest Postgres for analytics uh, in the entire market using the ClickBench benchmarks. Um, so that got a lot of attention uh, to the project. And, and yeah, it's been a really great to, to see that engagement. One of the really beautiful things about Postgres is it has a really wide breadth of many features, functionalities. And if you don't see it there, you can actually create extensions to add capabilities beyond what's just in the core Postgres uh, feature set. So um, a big focus for us moving forward is how do we deliver an increasing amount of uh, features and functions to our end users so that they can really take the warehouse and evolve it to their specific needs on that rich foundation of Postgres. I think that when you build products, you have to start from uh, the right foundations. One of those foundations is Postgres and Postgres is extensibility, but the other piece is open source. Open source really has the right values that we believe are necessary for a great warehouse, such as collaboration and uh, sadly, these are kind of values that were maybe not as emphasized in traditional enterprise data warehouses. In these traditional data warehouses, I mean, that extensibility you just mentioned, they, you know, they like it. You would probably need to get in touch with support and then, you know, good luck. So that's a superpower. Yes. Hydra. Uh, let me emphasize that open source and being completely transparent with building in public is a real superpower for, for any project. Uh, that especially deals with data or infrastructure, kind of at that, that lower level. Um, about April of last year, we decided that we really needed to do the hard tech thing, which was, hey, can we take Postgres and make it as fast as Redshift or as Snowflake? Uh, can we do that? Uh, and in doing so, that it's a, it's a big project. It requires uh, a lot of really uh, great engineers that are working really hard. Um, so, you know, we raised our seed round, uh, post YC and since then we've been, you know, strategically adding some of the really best people around to work on transforming Postgres and extending it into something that can be just as fast as these kind of more legacy, uh, systems for, for analytics. The great thing about Postgres is it's transactional capability. Um, so that is still in the product, something that is lacking from a lot of traditional warehouses that are just purely focused on OLAP, online analytical processing only. So with Hydra, you have a lot of flexibility to define, you know, okay, 
you know, I have a large fact table that I'd like to put into a columnar format. And then I have a high rate of uh, data ingestion and throughput that I'd like to continue managing as uh, in a row-based heap tables uh, within Postgres. So there's a bit of a fancy term here. Uh, it's called table access method. That's how our columnar is implemented. So within the same Hydra database, you can choose what tables are row, which ones are columnar. It gives you a lot of flexibility in defining uh, the workload and uh, and and the data modeling in the in the database. You know, keep it as simple as you can for as long as you can. I think that at larger scales, it absolutely makes sense to isolate between a transactional system and an analytical system. But certainly at smaller scales, uh, it can make a lot of sense to consolidate both your transactional and analytical in the same place to the to the extent that which uh, you know neither of these could be uh, you know impacted. I think columnar allows analytics to scale a lot better so that they're not as impacted by the transactional workload. All right. Th th thanks for those uh, for these insights. Uh, for for your team, from a go to market standpoint, what kind of channels do you mainly leverage? Uh, is there outbound going on with you know big enterprises? Is it mostly inbound and through marketing? Uh, how did you navigate this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Primarily, uh, most of our customers today are um, from inbound. Mm -hmm. So we have a free plan that folks can get started. This is a perpetually free plan that just goes to sleep after uh, 24 hours. You can continuously wake it up if you'd like to. Uh, it's a great way to get started on the cloud. Also because it's open source, well, you could use the uh, uh, Docker locally on your on your laptop. So you could you know, run Hydra there for simple feature and functionality testing. Um, yeah, we do outbound from time to time, but we've been lucky to have uh, healthy amount of inbound of people that say, hey, I've got a data warehouse today. I think it's way too expensive. And they're looking for an open source option. Or on the flip side, we also have people that have never used a data warehouse before. And Hydra is really their first foray into, into using a data warehouse. People that are familiar with using Postgres, but haven't really used a data warehouse before. Nice. So it's uh, simpler to use, it's much cheaper, it's free, and you know it's much more performant. Uh, so, I mean, that's a, it's a deal breaker right here. It sounds like that's, that's lovely. Um, could we cover a little how you approach monetization, you know, from a sustainability standpoint and uh, what different forms it's taking today might take in the future. Hydra is free to start, but the prices are also quite fair as you scale up to. So, um, you know, once you go beyond the free plan, then we charge for a cloud managed service, right? So think you're paying for the ops, you're paying for backups, you're paying for HA, disaster recovery, um, in place up upgrades so that uh, there's no downtime maintenance window or anything like that. So uh, those are the kinds of things that you pay for. Again, people could take our open source and run it for free uh, because we are starting from a principle of making the data warehouse accessible. Um, but Yes, we, we hope people will run our managed service and uh, they'll pay us for that managed service. We want Hydra to be adapted and evolved to your specific kind of industry specific or company specific needs. So um, if there's something that you'd like to see in Hydra, you can contribute it yourself. You can uh, open a pull request, you can uh, flag issues as they, as they arise. Um, we'll certainly give it a lot of attention. Uh, you have our focus. Uh, if you if you make some uh, noise in our repo, you have our focus. If you're not finding what you need, please jump into our Discord because that's a great way to talk not just with myself but the rest of the Hydra team directly. Moving towards releasing Hydra 1.0, this will be our main uh, production release where we officially have removed the Hydra beta tag. What you'll find is a really easy way to use columnar storage right in Postgres. Uh, we've made improvements, like I mentioned before, with query parallelization on the performance end, but then we've also added improvements around uh, vacuum and space reclamation and all those kinds of things that are needed to actually operate uh, a really you know, efficient data warehouse in production. Important. So if you know how to use Postgres, you like to use it, um, and you don't want to add uh, maybe a copious amount of databases, 
Hydra is a really great way to get started with uh, building analytics for your startup. No one was really doing OLAP Postgres. Um, and we figured we would be the ones that were crazy enough to, to do it. So um, maybe this was naive, uh, but we've uh, really made surprising progress already. So if you want to help us, uh, please be a contributor. Uh, we're like more than happy to welcome any um, discussions or, or new thoughts on where we can take things next. That as companies grow, uh, there's increasing pressure to diverge from values of openness, accessibility, fair pricing. So as Hydra continues to grow, um, you know, what are the things that we need to do to make sure that we're always emphasizing those values and that we don't diverge as we get bigger, more funding, um, you know, things like that uh, from, from outside or even inside pressures within the company. So those are the things that, that, you know, I'm curious to know as you take the organization from 10 people to a uh, hundred to a thousand, uh, theoretically. That's that's very interesting. Yeah, how do you create that uh, that compass that the organization can use uh, for making its decision? That, that compass and to like continue to reinvest in that culture that emphasizes those those tenants. We want everyone to love data just as much as we do, and I think there's a real opportunity to bring great analytics to Postgres in a way that you know they really haven't been before. So you know. Um, Hydra is a data warehouse that's meant for everyone and it's accessible to, to all people wherever you're living. So it, like I mentioned, it's free to start and I, I hope you'll give it a shot.